guys, Chris from Hockey Tutorial here, and today in this video, I wanted to take a look at the notion of stick spec and why your stick spec or even skates, maybe even other lines of protective, could be the wrong match for yourself. What I mean by this is I feel like the term stick spec has been taken into kind of like this realm where it's set in stone, set in concrete, it's not supposed to change. What you have as your spec is your spec forever. But in reality, it's fluid, it's not solid, it's constantly shifting and changing. And there's a couple of things that can affect that, whether it's performance-based changes or it's externally-based changes. And what I mean by that, performance speaks for itself. External changes are changes that happen to the equipment that you use that you have no control over, like families being discontinued or certain flexes or even curves being unavailable for players as a whole. Now, before we jump into the meats and bones in this video, I wanted to say a big thank you to the subscriber whose name I can't remember because I can't find the original comment or the video the comment was left on that suggested making this as a video. I read the comment, I replied to it, and I thought this would be a really good idea. And following on from the video that we just released when we looked at mid and hybrid kick sticks, I felt like this is probably the perfect video to drop after that. So let's take a look at what I mean by this. Now, so I guess the ultimate question here is how do you know the spec that you're using is the absolute optimal spec for you to be able to maximize on your ability and performance on the ice without having used all of the options that are available to you. Now, this is a very open question, but let me know in the comments how you guys decipher the best spec for you to be using and if you feel like you're in the category of what you have is optimal or you would love the opportunity to experiment and see if other options will work better for your style of play and your particular preferences. And of course, before we jump into the video, make sure you check out the t-shirt that I've got on over here. Link will be down below in the video description. We've got it also in black. We have it in P92, P29, P28, and of course, P88 for all of you out there that love those stick curves. So if you want to go out there and find your stick curve, all of the little logos underneath the actual curve are the exact stick curve. So it's a kind of like a low stated design, especially being in the UK. I feel like the only people that are going to know what this is, is hockey players. So it's kind of cool if you see someone wearing this and you play hockey, you'll know exactly what that t-shirt's about. I thought it'd be a cool design. If you like it and you want to pick it up, they ship worldwide. Link down below in the video description. Now, when we get into the meats and bones of spec, we filmed a video quite a while ago on NHL players. The title was NHL players don't use the best equipment. If you've not seen that video, I'll link it down below, where I kind of explained how the equipment that certain NHL players use, how all of that works. In that video, I mentioned that there was three player types when we look at NHL players, pro players specifically. The first one was the type of player that is under no circumstances going to change what they use. Doesn't matter if it's not even available, manufacturers will go out of their way to make that piece of equipment so that NHL player is satisfied. We've seen this happen. You guys know a lot of players that we'd be referencing in this instance. We're not going to bother going through the names, but you know what I mean. From there, you have the types of players that are so happy to try anything. Doesn't matter what it is, if it's going to give them an edge, if it's going to allow them to shoot harder and skate faster, even the possibility of that, they'll do it. They're happy to do that. And then the last player profile was the type of player that is apprehensive to change, but needs must. If something happens, push comes to shove, they will apprehensively move on to something else. But that's when we look at NHL players. If we to look at the majority of you guys that watch this video, recreational players, average Joes, beer leaguers, even some competitive players, it's a little bit different for us. And there's actually a fourth category that we could add, which would be players that are locked into a certain spec or setup of equipment based on the cost of the gear. Now this is a big one and it's something that's definitely not lost on me. I know players don't just have the option to go out there and buy three different pairs of top spec skates, three different top spec sticks in different curves or flexes to see which one they like. I know that's not a realistic factor and of course I'm gonna be breaking down these profiles in this video to hopefully make this video make sense. And of course, before we get any deeper into the video, comment down below and let me know out of the four different player profiles, which one do you think you fit into and why? Now when we look at players that have equipment changes or spec changes based on performance. This is something that I think everyone can say that they know someone or they've experienced this themselves. I myself have switched skate sizes, skate brands numerous times, skate flexes, the, the height of my stick, the curve I'm using. All of that has shifted since making videos with Tommy, partly because it's a lot easier when we order equipment because it means that we are all in the same size equipment using the same stick curves, the same flexes, the same heights of the sticks themselves, the same skate sizes. That makes it a lot easier because we can just double up on what we're ordering. It keeps things nice and clean and we can chop and change between gear between ourselves while we're testing it for videos, which is really nice. The other reason I did this is because Tommy convinced me to cut my stick down or rather to use one of his sticks in his stick height. And the minute I did that, I could slap shot way better. I could control the puck way better. Like 
I'm not trying to act like I'm some superstar on the ice because Jesus Christ, I'm not. But my performance went from here to here, which was nice because it just made me feel more confident on the ice. And I never would have done that had he not made me do it. And that's what I mean by performance-based spec changes. You could be a player that's having a drought. You've not hit the back of the net in God knows how long. And you use one of your friend's sticks that has the same model of stick as you, but in a different flex and a different curve. And as a result of doing that, you find that the performance that you have on the ice is unreal. You're now top of the leaderboard and everything's great. Automatically, you're gonna be like, I'm not going back to my old setup. My old spec is dead now. This is what I'm using now because it works. That's what I mean when I say performance-based spec changes. Now from there, we've got external factors that affect what you can use, which is pretty self-explanatory. If you look at manufacturers today, they was like a whole sheet, a whole list of stick curves you can choose with manufacturers. And now that's in some cases been dropped down to three, um, if you're lucky, four. If you go custom, that's a completely different story. But if you walk into a store or you're buying online, you have somewhere between three and four curves to choose between. Same with different sticks that were available previously, but now those manufacturers have decided to discontinue those lines. That means that if you used, for example, a high kick stick in a curve that's no longer available, high kick sticks are no longer available, you would be forced because of external factors to adapt your curve and adapt your stick profile and adapt your entire spec. That's what I mean. These types of changes just go ahead and show you how fluid the game is and how fluid the term spec really should be treated. Because whatever you prefer now, it's very, very likely that something will happen that will mean that you will slightly alter what you're using, whether that's because it allows you to play better or that's because maybe perhaps it's no longer available. But there are different reasons as to why I think we need to look at the term of my spec as very loose because it's something that is forever fluid and forever changing. Now, something else that I feel like is really relevant to discuss, especially after the previous video that we dropped, is also the way that a stick's characteristics will change over time. This is something that I know players are aware of, but I don't know if all players are aware of it. What I mean by this is if we were to purchase, for example, two Bauer Sync sticks in the exact same spec, same height, and you put one in the locker room and no one touched it, and you used one and you played competitively, let's say you're on the ice four times a week, two games every weekend, and you did that for five weeks only using that one stick. After that period of time, if you were to then grab the other brand new stick that you left in the locker room that nobody touched in the exact same spec, so it's a fresh out the box stick, you taped it up like we do in the blind test videos and you got on the ice with it. And for example, I gave it to Tommy to try and see if he could feel the difference. He would feel a difference and he would be able to say one stick is the better one in his opinion in terms of the way it feels for him versus another one. Or if he's looking at it from a perspective of which one, if we had a radar gun, is shooting harder, which one is not shooting as hard. And what I mean by this is over time, the composite materials inside the stick will essentially break down and you could say soften very loosely because hopefully you see what I'm trying to say here. And that means that the performance characteristics of that stick will shift over time. Now, I'm not saying that the breaking down of the composite materials in the stick is gonna mean the, stick, the stick's gonna disintegrate and break. It just means that it's gonna soften over time like any other material once put under stress essentially would in hockey. Now, what this means is you could find a player would actually like that stick after it's been softened a little bit versus the straight out of the box feel, which is gonna be a bit stiffer, not as whippy, but of course it's gonna have a little bit more pop. But then at the same time, as you use a stick and you break it down, you adapt to the way that stick performs. But it's only if you were to go back to the same stick, brand new, and put them against each other, would you go, wow, there is a big difference in the way these two sticks feel. And a player could like that slightly softened, you could say broken in stick versus the fresh out of the box feel. Now, what I mean by this is essentially, I understand how difficult experimentation with the different price points and the different curves is for players out there trying to figure out what they wanna buy, what they wanna use, and what's gonna be the best option for themselves. And it's why we create the videos that we do to try and share as much insight as we can. But the way that I wanna combat that, in addition to making videos that are looking at equipment from a lower price point, because I think that's something that we definitely neglect on the channel, I see the comments. And the reason we do this is not because we're not listening, it's purely because of requests. When we get one request for a video idea, it's very difficult to be able to then create that idea based off of one request. It has to make sense for the collective. And the amount of feedback I've had about looking at more affordable equipment has been massive. So it's something that we're looking at introducing. We're trying to figure out a format that makes sense. If you guys have any ideas of how we should format these videos, please let me know. But one thing we're definitely gonna be doing is looking at all of the videos we've just dropped, all the series of videos we've dropped on sticks, where we did low kick sticks, 
against each other to see which manufacturer makes the best low kick stick. And we've just recently done that with mid kick and hybrid kick sticks. I wanna do the exact same format of videos, but looking at sticks from $100 to $150 for low kick. And in terms of mid kick and hybrid kick, the same price point, $100 to $150. But do you want me to separate those two sticks? So you have mid kick as its own video and then hybrid kick as its own video. Let me know if that makes more sense because of course hybrid kicks could realistically go against mid kick and also low kick. But in my mind, it makes more sense for them to go against mid kick. But let me know what you guys want and that's what we'll make happen. But in addition to that, something that I think goes without saying is when you look at the price of equipment, it is skyrocketing. It's insane. I remember when a top spec stick cost less than $200. Now it's closer to the $400 mark with some manufacturers. I feel like this makes it very difficult for players to get what they want and still, you know, not break the bank essentially. And I feel like what a really good way of being able to experiment with different curves and flexors might be is to not look at the manufacturers that are charging plus $300 for a top spec stick. Manufacturers like who are going to get a shameless shout out here, Sherwood, are creating sticks that as you've seen when we looked at the battles that we've done, in some cases are better than their rivals which are $100 more. Now if they're not better, they're essentially on par which is insane considering the price difference. Now what this means is I'm not saying buy Sherwood top spec instead of one of the other manufacturers top spec. I'm saying look at Sherwood's mid-range. That might enable you to perhaps buy two, maybe even three, depending on which price bracket you go for, which will still total at maybe even less than buying one top spec stick from another manufacturer. Now what this might allow you to do is perhaps buy these two or three sticks in different flexes or maybe in different curves to see which one will be better suited to your style of play. This isn't the best solution, but it's a solution nonetheless that will hopefully allow you guys to find out what curve, what flex works better for you. Because like I said at the start of the video, the changes I made to my equipment over the last few years since filming with Tommy have made an impact on my game. So if this is something that you guys can do at a slightly lower price point, then by all means, I definitely recommend doing it. And of course, let's not forget a while back, years ago, we filmed a video on the best stick you could get for under $100. This is a series that I wanna bring back as well, but I'm gonna need your help in terms of suggesting which manufacturers we should have in that video. Now, of course, True, Sherwood, Warrior, Bauer, CCM, those are manufacturers that are gonna be there by default, but is there anyone else that we don't know about that's not been featured on the channel that should be included in that video? Bear in mind, it needs to be a, below $100, or you know, if it's like 105 or 106, you guys let me know if that's okay to slide, but we're trying to keep the price point at about 100 or less. Let me know in the comment section what manufacturers we need to look at if it's one that's not been featured on the channel before. As always guys, a big, big thank you for watching the video all the way to the end. Please let me know if there's anything else that you want us to shoot, discuss, any VSs, reviews, whatever you want to see, let us know and we'll make it happen. Of course, make sure you check out the t-shirts. The link is down below in the video description. It has different curves in the center and of course the little logo of the stick blade at the bottom is actually in the different shapes of the curves that's represented above it comes in two different colors. This is the charcoal or light gray. It also comes in a black or maybe like a charcoal black. If you go on the site, link down below, you'll see for yourself. And of course they ship worldwide. If you like the design, cop one, make sure you send me a picture when you've got one because I'd love to see where in the world these get shipped. Just off of the first video that I discussed these shirts in, we've already got a few of them en route to Canada, the USA, Germany, Switzerland, and also Australia. So those of you that have ordered already, big, big thank you. And I can't wait to see you guys rocking these. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And let me know what you want to see next and take care till next time. Peace.